Pretty. Can you please explain Ugandan knuckles? I, I, I don't actually know. I haven't looked into it. Um, I, I know there's a, a whole bunch of memes about it. Yes. Uh, I, I'm not sure, other than that, I'm not sure what exactly is going on. I mean, what's up with Texans' grandmothers and the Ugandan knuckles? Oh, I, I don't know. Like, I, um, I saw it briefly on uh, the PewDiePie thing on the VR chat. Yes. But other than that, I have no idea. Do you watch PewDiePie now? A little bit, yeah. I watch more his commentaries yes. rather than the gameplay. Oh, I know. His commentaries are brilliant. They're, yeah. They're getting much, much... Well, let's just say that he's growing up. Yeah. And, and if you actually see him do, like, a breakdown of, say, an event or something, he's remarkably thoughtful. Yeah. Um, can you turn off the fan, please? Sure. Yeah. I mean, his gameplay is still as childish and parole as ever, but... If you get him to really think about something, he can really think about it. Yeah, and it's um, yeah, I, I like more the commentaries of a particular issue. Oh yes. R rather than the gameplay part, because you know it's not only is it reaffirming, mm. and it, it not not only it's a relevant topic, but also it's a different perspective of a particular news item. Especially if it's a YouTuber talking about another YouTuber. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, and, you know, that's the reason why, I'm sorry to say, I prefer Fox to CNN. You prefer Fox to CNN? Yeah. Purely because it is a different perspective. Ah, yes. And you don't want to be stuck in the lefty bubble. Yeah, well, yeah. And, like, um, like, like people, people in New Zealand that, you know, are very adamant on which... Um, news outlet to go to. Yes. Either it's TV1 or TV3, right? Yeah. Usually with me, you, you know, when I have a lot of time on my hands, which I don't, Okay. I, I watch both broadcasts. Yeah. TV1 and TV3. They'll say pretty much the same thing, but their wording will be slightly different. Oh, yes. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. I usually prefer RNZ and the BBC. Yeah. So, like, so um, they're known as lefties. Yeah. But it's like, I prefer them because they just tell you the facts. Yeah. So, so like... Uh, Whatever you think the fact is. Well, yeah. So, I suppose. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, like, any sort of... You know, because we are economically leftish. Yes. Um, you're more lefty than me. Surprising. Surprising. Considering Surprising. that I'm I am on the high I am considered to be on the higher socioeconomic ladder, which means I should be cons more conservative because I should be wanting to preserve my position as well as lord my uh, aspirations and status above you. Yes. Yes. And but I. Uh, but I. And more for the poor people than you are a yeah. poor person. Yeah. So which means that you are who's they selfish? You or me? You you don't support the poor people as much as you don't support the poor people as much as me. But you're poor. Yeah, but yeah, it's okay. Okay. If you can say poor, yeah, relatively poor, um, relatively poor. Well, well, it, well yeah. and, it, and it comes down to this. Yes. Um, I've been there. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. So like. Usually, <laughs> you, you you can say you are for the f poor people. Yes. But you, you seem to be more. For, you, you seem to have a. I seem to have a better grasp of what a poor people's needs are. Ah. Because you are because you are one of them, and therefore you can actually have. You you basically give giving me an insider's perspective. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah, and, and a and a polite non-swearing way yes yeah in an academic way yes yeah because you know people would swear a lot but that's not getting your point across no so usually when it comes to some sort of point i want to make either if it's me talking to you or some sort of official yes my tone does not change no it is the same what i tell you is exactly what i'm going to tell them yes that promotes transparency Yep. And in saying that, welcome back to the As Yet Undecided podcast with your transparent hosts, 
Mike and Sophie. Yeah. Um, and, and saying that today is a little bit strange. Yes. Um, because because we have no video. Ah oh, yes. We have changed seats. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now before we begin. Yeah. Do you find my political views annoying, patronising, or? No. No. Um. If if I were to say anything about your views, in, in re- especially in regards to poor people, yes, it's a little bit ignorant. Yes, but because I know you, yes, I know why you're ignorant about that. I know why. But my, well, my 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 job is to inform you in a way that you'd understand. Yes. Is, is, is that right? Yes. Yeah. I think a lot of political debate happens because the other person cannot understand the other person's side. Yeah. So, it's almost as if we have a lacuna of knowledge. And if everyone knew everything, then we won't be having debates at all. Correct. So, I suppose a lot of fights happen just because we don't listen to the other side enough. Which is... Yeah, correct. Which is a bit sad. I mean, for 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 any sort of like yes, yeah. I mentioned this in the last in the last podcast. The 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 best the the most important part of having the right ship is communication. Yep. Yep. So if you want to stop having fights, start listening more. Yeah. Active listening rather than a passive listen. I know. Like, actually digest what the other person is saying in your head. Yeah. And with that being said, would you like to digest some venison? What? Medicine? Oh. Venis- venison. Oh. Venison. I thought it was medicine, not venison. Okay, so we have... I've always wanted to try this, but I'm, I am not too pretentious about it. So... Canterbury Bultong air-dried beef snacks. Wild New Zealand venison. Fuel yourself with flavour. Oh my goodness, this is so hyper-masculine. Why am I talking about this? Actually, you say it, you have much more, you have lots more testosterone in your voice, so... Canterbury Pultong, air-dried beef snacks. Mike? Yeah? You need to be more manly. I've tried to be and it didn't work. Mary? Um, fuel yourself with flavour. <laughs> is that more manly now? Yes. Is that more manly? Yes. But in saying that, before, before we open it up, I have... Something very pretentious to show you. Go ahead. Now, what do you see here? Salt. What? 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 For the viewers at home, what does it say? Pam's iodized, iodized table salt. Now, would you consider that to be very pretentious? No. No. Not yet. What's in it? Now, if you open it up, I, I open up the lid. Himalayan salt. Yeah. Since when? Since last week. You're doing this wrong, Mike. You have to grind this up. I know. Do you want me to get your salt grinder? No, it's okay. But I I, I thought it would be a very non-pretentious thing to do. What? Have Himalayan rock salt in a in a pour package. Yeah. This is you, isn't it? Yep, yeah, this is me. Humble on the outside, rich on the inside. Yep. Yeah. Low quality on the outside, high high quality on the inside. Correct. That's how poor people would like to be resembled as. Yes. We would rather judge you by what you are and not what you have. Yep. Wow, this is salty. Yeah, it is salty. Salt is salty, Sophie. Seriously, though, this is much stronger than table salt. Yep. Now, do you want to go into this Canterbury boot <laughs> hole? <laughs> Alright, and for the pretentious people at home, how little did this cost? Five dollars? No, six dollars. It's all six dollars. Okay. For 40 grams. Okay. Developed using the spice and seasoning found on quality biltong throughout biltong's homeland, South Africa. Spices are mixed and toasted on site to ensure freshness and optimum flavour. Our venison is red deer from the forest and Alps of New Zealand. Enjoy a great, healthy, tasty snack or pack a lifesaver into the great outdoors. Pack a lifesaver? Apparently this is, these are lifesavers. But I don't recall them being so minty. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Venison, salt, sugar... Original ingredients. Venison, salt, sugar, spices, vinegar. 
Do you think I forgot to put a comma on, over here? Maybe. Yeah, Venus and Salt. What yeah. on earth is Venus and Salt? Yeah, yeah, I would like to know what Venus and Salt is. Mm. They, more like they forgot to put it in a comma. Okay. Right. It's very chippy. It's like meat chip. Yeah, meat chippy. Yeah. Shredded meat chips. Mmm, very nice. Air dried beef snacks. I thought this was deer. This is deer, right? Yeah. Why do they call themselves air dried beef snacks? Well, you can say beef, venison is beef. Technically. How? Red meat. I thought beef was beef, like came from a cow. Yeah, yeah, but oh, dear me. How? Huh? Um. Now, thoughts. It's definitely meaty. Yeah. I quite like the um slightly spiced manly flavour. Yeah. Mmm. Nothing very feminine about the snack, but... Yeah. Oh, well, who cares? Um, it's it's very subtle. Dry. Um, no, because, like, uh, like, uh, uh, like, it's beef, uh, um, was it Jack Link's is a lot stronger than that. The flavour is a lot stronger. Mmm. Um, with that, it's very subtle. Um, you can taste the venison in it, and you can taste the spice, yes. which is pretty much your ideal interpretation of a jerky. Mm. Oh, sorry, a beef chip. <laughs> um, I would prefer the slivers, like it, it, it actually be looking like a chip. Oh, yes. The, sa the savory stuff or the sweet stuff for the pretentious food corner um either or it's fine mm. oh the barcode's quite clever the top of the barcode is uneven to make it look like grass and then there's a cow in it eating the barcode yeah yeah that's clever yeah now talking about um Social economic differences. Do you think school uniforms should be free? Now, now, the, 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 this has been the New Zealand topic of the week because um, school is back this week. Yes, and um, the government has also announced a package to be given to um, disabled kids. Yes, that's right. Um, to combat child po poverty. And of course, one of the biggest problems of child poverty is that the kid often can't quite afford school uniforms. Yes. Um, now, school uniforms were, uh, were existed to nullify the classism. Yeah. So you can't say that you're poor if... You can't say that it's one person's poor and the other one's rich if they're all wearing the same clothes. No. But, um... There is a slight problem. What's that, Sophie? What if you cannot afford the school uniform? Correct. And this is the point that you pointed out to me, which was a completely valid point. Mm -hmm. um, if you are punishing a child for not wearing a school uniform, why shouldn't it be free? Mm. Because what you're essentially doing is punishing the kid for being poor. Yeah. It's, like it's, not, it's not his or her fault. Correct. Dead right. Yeah. Um, and even my sister, who is a single mother with two kids, mm -hmm. was on the fence. Oh, I see. About that issue. Because what the school uniform represents, um, the thing about the positives here, not necessarily the negatives. Oh, yes. Um, it increases stability. Mm -hmm. it, it increases order in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and discipline right I'm not going to say whack your kids is a form of discipline that, that's out of the way but if you create a stable 
disciplined environment, the child can thrive. Yes. Some children will thrive, other children won't. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah, rebel. But, um, hey. We're not talking about whether school uniforms are good for the kids or not. We're here to talk about whether we should actually make them free or not. Mm. Now. I mean, whether the uniform is beneficial for the learning environment is an entirely different debate. Yeah. And um, that's why you have some schools that have looser uniform requirements than others. Yes. So, for example, um, ACG, a prestigious private school in Parnell, does not have school uniforms, and yet they they always chart the academic tables right behind St. Cuthbert's. Yeah. Where St. Cuthbert's is, you know, you have to spend a few thousand dollars on school uniforms every year. Yeah. And we're the best. Yeah. So it's like, uh... I suppose it depends on what kid you have and what type of school environment you want to bring, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah, it's, it, this is actually quite funny because when we talk about how school uniforms should be free, I was reminded of a time when I was back in the archives, back at St. Cuthbert's, and I was reading about the old uniforms. Yeah. You need to... <laughs> I mean, they were so extra back then, back 100 years ago. You need to have it tailor-made at Smith & Coey's. Wow. Yeah. There was a time when you had to have your uniform tailor-made at Smith & Coey's, so which means like a white silk shirt, um, cotton underwear, silk stockings. Silk stockings, really? Yes, silk stockings, woolen woolen um, overdress, leather shoes. I mean, they still do the leather shoes, but I have to admit, if my parents thought they had it bad, they could have had it worse back yeah. then. Yeah. These days, um, you can just buy this uniform ready-made over at the at the Black Watch House uniform shop. Yeah. And the materials are more artificial. Yeah. But hey, they're a bit cheaper. Yeah. Um. I mean, honestly, tailored short, tailored silk shirts. What were they thinking? Yeah. But mind you, hundred years ago, some people were stupendously rich. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um. And, and, and as a person who grew up. In, well, they've got rid of the decile system, but um, it's part of the. Um, I, I grew I, I grew up in a decile one, B, which was just off poor scores you can get. Mm. Um, school uniform, we we, we had greys, yeah, for the start, and then we went to um, blue and black, and everyone was crying about the when they changed the uniform. Why? Because even though it, it, it made the kids look smarter, mm. it's pretty much, you know, I have to pay for a whole new school uniform again. I see. Yeah. That's always difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and even if you want to buy a school uniform, it seems to be a lot more higher price than just getting a t-shirt, a, 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 a almost coloured t-shirt. Just because it has a logo on it, yes, it costs a lot more. Mm. I mean, some schools have decided to go halfway, saying um, you need to have this style shirt and this color. Yeah. But this particular shirt can be bought at Kmart for five dollars. Yeah. So it's kind of like so you kind of look the same. Yeah. Except not quite. Yeah. Yeah. That's what should happen. Yeah, but um, some schools were would. But yeah, yeah, it's it's completely up to the school to enforce the rule. But you have to admit they should not punish kids just for being poor. Yeah. Because you you know a a poor person wouldn't really care about you know being like from a different shop. Yes. All they want to have is inclusiveness. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, school. Just it took an hour just to get grab all my stuff for the uniforms all the mm. time. Like every single time I change schools, I have to spend an hour at the shop. Now, and then in the same premise, mm? what's your take on stationery? I hate stationery lists. Yeah. For the very same reason, because they're basically punishing poor kids again. Yeah. I knew that. Um, yeah, like even getting a graphics cal calculator. Yes. That was expensive. They're about hundred one hundred dollars these yeah. days. Yeah. 
And by the end, when I got my first one, it was 120. And it was like, great to see all the graphs and stuff, but... Yeah. And I still have it at home, I think. I still have it. Um, Again, same yeah. rules. If you're going to force the kid to have it, you may as well make it free. Yeah. But, you, you, but yeah, even with the consistency that technology brings now... Mm-hmm those sort of calculators will go out of function. But in saying that, the school has to enforce that. Yes. So, like, if you had a tablet and, you know, you would, you know, use it as a um, graphics calculator just by doing the function. Yes. Um, it might be confiscated because it's outside of school policy. Yeah. I mean, it does the same job. Yeah. Well, for an alpha, it's quite good with that. Yeah, l- 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 you know, yeah. Doing, doing math stuff on a fruit pad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or a male robot. A male robot? Android? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, at least it's better than the soup. Do that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Once they run out, run out of um, letters for... No, once they run out of letters for the Android versions, where do you think they'll go next? Oh, uh, well, I don't do, know. Do you think they'll go back to the A's again? Probably not. Maybe... maybe Greek m- letters? Yeah, maybe that. Maybe, maybe they'll go double A. Or numbers? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the number is associated with the letter. Mm. So, after Z, they might go for 27. Yeah, but yeah, the, the, the problem is, is with... Um, Oh, because they're all named after sweets, aren't they? Desserts. The desserts. So, what's the latest one? Are we on marshmallow? Nougat now. Nougat. 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 Nougat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I will just go, yeah well, I'm just waiting for the Oreo version. Do you think O is Oreo? Maybe. What's P, then? Um. Hmm. Palm is... No, no. Pie? Something pie, yeah. Yeah. Q could be... A, like a pecan pie? Yeah, pecan. Oh, pecan pie, yes. Yeah. What's Q then? I don't know. I don't know either. It's, well, T could be Turismo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, <laughs> you have to get desserts from all sorts of cultures in order to fill up the whole alphabet. Mm. And afterwards, it may, actually, no, maybe they'll change the theme. Maybe. Yes. From sweet to say... Savoury. Yeah. Tangy. S- Savory dishes. Yep. So A could be antipasto. Huh. B could be bread. C could be. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, back to stationary and things. So same rules, right? If you're going to force a kid to have it at school, you may as well make it free. Yep. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or have a tiered system. Yeah. So, for example, if you can prove that you broke. As anything, you can get things for free, and if you, and if you prove that you're rich, you still have to pay for it. No, no, but you, you, but look, like I, I would think like the relevant tiers for uniform. I see. Like because like a, a kid, a kid would not matter. No, you know, a primary school, a primary school kid would not matter if their friend wears a blazer. Would not mind. Yeah, would not mind. It's all going to get dirty regardless. I know. <laughs> And grass stains everywhere. Yeah. Always grass stains. Um, but I think when, when you get into that um, secondary school, that's when it starts to matter a little bit. Oh, yes. Um, because we be like, oh my God, you're so rich now because you have a blazer. That, that's actually um, bringing in the classism. Yes. That uniforms didn't have. I know. Okay, now, if we're going to talk about people, we're going to talk about... Hey, have you seen Federer ha- winning? No, no, no. Now here's, now, here's an interesting thing. Recently, there was this huge fight between the Dow and the Tennis Association saying that um, tennis people should be paid more. That could be put in classes act in and of itself. Now, uh, well, well, um, it, was, it was brought up. Okay, firstly, we have to premise this. Okay? Yes. I was, I, I got a text. Mm-hmm. From somebody, aka my co-host, yes, on Sunday night, yeah, and uh, asking her what are you, what are you doing? 
And, I, and she replied, I'm watching Federer. And I'm like, what? Sophie? Watching tennis? I oh, come on, it's Australian Open. Finals. Sophie? Watching sport? And guess what? I saw Federer... Look, okay, I do watch some sport, but only if it's like the best of the best. So, for example, the Rugby World Cup Finals, if the All Blacks are in it. Um, the America's Cup, if the... Team New Zealand are in it, yeah. and tennis if they're going to go for major milestones, such as Federer winning his twentieth Grand Slam and becoming the first man to hit that number. Now, I mean, there's been several women that already did it. Yeah, but the men only took them until now. Yeah. Now, I had been in that room mm? watching it ever since it started at nine o'clock. Yeah. And I did not leave until the game was over. 12 o'clock, right? Yeah, I even watched the women's final, which was great. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, I was a bit, like, taken back a bit. I'm like, what? Sophie's watching sport? I know, it's amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, I, and, like, going back to the point, it was originally brought up by Djokovic. Yes. Back before the Open first started. I thought it was in the Dow, it was actually Djokovic, right. Um, and he said how they should get paid more. Um... And then Wozniak here in her winning speech also said the same thing. Yes. Now, um, a, a whole bunch of me and my tennis mates that live in a hostel, we, we were talking about this issue, and we agree mm. that they should they should get paid more, right? But which ones? Because if you're in the top ten, you get hundreds of millions. Yes. Even touching the billions sometimes. Now. Yeah, yeah, well, you you have to think about where is the money going to go. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do deliberately um, lessen the purse at the top so you can feed the bottom? Mm -hmm. um, if they want increased purse, are you going to increase the the tickets for the viewing public to see it? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, right at the front, it's already seventeen thousand um, uh, Australian dollars. The most minimum price is six grand to get into the finals. To get into the finals. To see the finals, you mean? To see the final. So seventeen thousand dollars for the um, box office seats. Yeah. And six thousand for the nosebleeds. Yeah, behind the baseline. Yeah. Six grand. Um, we can only see um, two tiny little men or women. Yeah. And you can't see the ball at all. Yeah. Um, oh, do you know what's the funniest thing watching tennis is? What? Um, watching the audience with their heads swiveling in sync. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. so yes, um, the tickets are super expensive, yes, so we're wondering where the money's coming from. Yeah, so, so you do want to increase... The, the ticket price because of the uh, because of the increased purse yeah um do sponsor do, do they have to raise the sponsors price to get sponsors to come on board mm. um and then the the, the 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 biggest debate of it all yes is the disparity between men's and women's tennis men's get paid more work right right Always. Now, it's always been that way for now, sport, for every single sport. Yeah. Um, and, and they want parity, mm. which is fair enough. I understand that. But two uh, two arguments. Mm. One, they pay the exact same price for tickets, right? So right. it's the same amount of people going in and going out. Yes. Right? Second part is, technically... Women only play twenty sixty percent of the match. Why is that? Because women play up to three sets, men mm -hmm. play up to five sets. I see. So I think, well, do you do you want grand slams to go to five sets for women? Why not? Why not? Yeah. If you want equal pay, do the equal work. Yeah. But why do they only do three sets for women, women in the first place? I don't know why that is. Yeah, uh, I mean... And only in the majors that the men only do five. Every other tournament is three. In the majors, men do the five, and every single... yeah. So for the other tournaments where the women play exactly the same as men, they should be equally paid. Correct. And if we go into the major tournaments, if women want to be paid the equal the, the same, they need to 
play the exact same game. Correct. And why aren't they playing the exact same game? Is it, it's a we have something we have to research. Yeah, I, I, and, I, I'm assuming it's a welfare issue. Yeah, like they but in saying like, that, they assume women to be more delicate. Da 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 da. But in saying that, yeah. they are professionals. Yep, and they and of course it's their right to demand more money. With that being said, do you think we're ever going to see a gender neutral tennis match? I mean, we have seen a man pl- man play woman before, like the like the um, winners of like the male winner versus the female winner of a particular grand grand slam. They've done those matches before for charity. Yeah, um, yeah, I think only in a charity sense. Yeah, that will happen. Like yeah. men versus women. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But, but one of the things that I just saw that was absolutely amazing was yes. wheelchair tennis. Oh yeah, it's amazing. How do they do that? They, 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 they whack a ball and suddenly they have to swivel around and whack yep. a ball. Yep. Holy moly. Yep. Is that as good as murder ball? Uh, murder ball's a lot better. Murder ball's a real chick rugby, by the way. It's a lot worse yep. in terms of injuries than normal rugby. It's brutal. Yeah, it is brutal. But in saying that, it's great. Yeah. It's almost as if I don't, I'm already paralysed on the waist down. I don't care if I break my spine again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have that sort of mentality. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. And furthermore, they don't even care if they break their legs because they can't feel their legs. Yeah. So, yeah, right. um, so yeah, yeah, I'm just, just like, it's amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is what rugby could look like if you cut out the pain tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, if, murder ball is kind of like watching NFL on steroids, in yeah. a way. Yeah. What's happened? Oh. And it's like... What were you thinking? Why would you do this? Why would you hurt yourself again? And it's like, we don't care. Um, we already lost this league. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> anyway, wheelchair tennis. Yeah. Do they have those in New Zealand? Or? Oh, well, they do. Um, yeah. e- even though New Zealanders didn't make it into um, the quarters, the semis in the final. Uh, yeah. They didn't make the finals, that's for sure. Okay. Which tournament? Aussie Open. Oh, okay. Wheelchair. Tennis. In the Aussie Open? Yeah. When did that happen? Um... It happened like the day of the the finals happened the day of the women's final. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. How come we haven't heard about it? Why don't they advertise it more? Yeah, well, yeah, and and saying that we wanted to watch, um, the Canada Uruguay yeah. rugby game, mm-hmm. um, which is because there's only two more qualifying spots for the rugby world cup. Oh yes. Yeah, and we couldn't get it anywhere. Oh. We couldn't get it anywhere. That's a pity. Yeah, because uh, it's like when it goes down to that, it goes on a um, on a home away basis. You pay home and then you pay away. Oh yes. Yeah, and Canada lost at home. Oh my god, that's so bad because I have to go home afterwards and she explain why they did so. No, well, they lost. Well, they have to go to Uruguay in yep. two weeks, and if they don't win by more than ten points, they don't. They have to go into another tournament. Ooh. Against Hong Kong. The All Blacks, are we in? Of course we're in. Um, where's it played next? Japan, isn't it? Yeah. When's that? Um, 2019. Do you think we might do a hat trick? I doubt it. Why is that? Because we lost Richie McCall? No, 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 no. Um, yeah, I don't think that will win it. I see. Scotland should have been in the final. I think. And the last one. They're talking about Wales. Scotland. Oh, yes. Scotland should Scotland have... versus Australia in the semis. Yeah. La- last last time. Yeah. I mean, the referee screwed up, didn't he? Oh, uh, when did they not screw up, though? Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. I saw a meme one time of, um, okay, what's this very famous Scottish uh, film called, like, Outland or something? Like, Oh, you 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 talking about Highlander or you're Highlander? About... Yeah. Yeah. You know the scene from Highlander in which uh, you have a bunch of soldiers and with blue face paint called Ward, and they're all with the spears and they're all and they're all like standing outside somewhere. Oh no, you're talking about Braveheart. Braveheart, sorry, Braveheart. And then the meme, the meme caption was, "Hello, we would like to talk to the referee, please." <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> oh. 
Talking about rugby, wasn't there this guy called the Bus, called like David Sewell or something rather? The Bus. The Bus. Yeah, what's he called? Julian Savia. Julian Savia, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, there are several memes about him too, like his face on several buses. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because like um, yeah, Christian Cullen used to be called the Pie Cockerie Express. <laughs> yeah. Because it was so quick. Yeah. Even though word on the street is he's not the he 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 he's um a pretty dim bulb. Oh. Yeah. So, what other rugby nicknames do we have? Um. Oh, the, oh damn it. Uh, uh, well, I forgot now, but, you know, we, we all have their nicknames. What do we call Richie McCall, then? God? <laughs> Razor, I think. But the, 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 that's also um, Scott Robinson, who um, was the under-19 coach. That right. was his nickname as well. Razor. Razor Robinson. Because he was fast and... Cut through things. Oh, you know, it's pretty cutthroat. Oh, as a flanker, you know, it was back in the early days. It was Richard McCourt and him. Wow. Yeah. And with that said, we have to take the bus to the pub quizzing. Pub quizzing now. Yes. Okay. This has been the Asian Insider Podcast with you... your conflicting host. Oh, maybe not so conflicted, Mike and Sophie. You... I know. I mean, why be so chill these days? Uh, it's two thousand eighteen. We have to be chill, super chill. How may we contact us? On the Marnus, T H E M A R N U S. Sorry for cutting you out twice. Or Sophie9709. That was the third time. Or you can contact the podcast itself on. As yet undecided podcast at gmail.com, which goes to show how bad my social skills are because I just managed to cut you out thrice. Yes. And um, if you do wish to follow us on social media, we are at AYU Podcast, at AYU Podcast. Have a nice day, people. Stop.